If you've been looking for open air off road fun with a plug, you haven't had an option in the US until now. Today I'm standing right next to the new Jeep Wrangler 4xE. Now this isn't a battery electric Wrangler just yet. It is a plug in hybrid with 22 miles of electric range, after which it will turn into a hybrid Wrangler, also a first for the Jeep brand. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive under the hood, so let's just unplug it and see what makes this thing tick. Fortunately, Jeep brought out one of their cutaway models so we can see exactly what this looks like under the skin. Let's dive into the components. Up front here, we have a two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. This is essentially the same two liter four cylinder engine that we find in the rest of the Wrangler lineup. It produces 270 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque on its own. But you'll notice the changes up here in blue. We have an electric starter motor generator over here on this side. That's good for 44 horsepower and 39 pound feet of torque. And then we have an electric air conditioning compressor over there on the other side. Behind the engine, there's also an electric heater unit. So not only can this cool the cabin in electric mode, it can also heat the cabin in electric mode. That makes us a little bit different than some other plug in hybrids that have to start the gasoline engine to heat the cabin. Cabin. Now this isn't a mild hybrid with a bigger starter motor generator unit and a plug like you might find in some other world markets. Instead we have a large electric motor integrated into the 8-speed automatic transmission. This is still a ZF 8-speed automatic transmission and they build the entire transmission actually for Jeep. This is basically the same design that was seen out of ZF before but with some tweaks for the Wrangler. We have a much bigger electric motor in here than ZF first announced when they launched this transmission a number of years ago. This has a 181 horsepower electric motor inside. Now you might be wondering why does this vehicle have two electric motor units, one here in the transmission and one up front bolted to the engine. The reason is you need to be able to charge the battery at a stoplight. This transmission deletes the torque converter and instead inserts a multi-plate clutch unit up front. And the electric motor is on the other side of the clutch unit from the engine. So this motor cannot charge the battery when the vehicle is at a stop. That's what this electric motor up here is for. It's also responsible for starting the engine when you need to start the engine. That reduces some of the shocks that you find in hybrid vehicles that don't have a secondary electric motor up front. A number of early hybrid and plug-in hybrid vehicles that used a similar arrangement did not have an electric motor to start the gasoline engine, and that results in kind of abrupt transitions from hybrid power to EV power and reverse. The combination of the 2-liter turbo and the electric motor inside the transmission casing gives you 375 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. After about this point on, the drivetrain is exactly the same as the rest of the Wrangler lineup. We have an 8-speed automatic transmission, two different 2-speed transfer cases depending on the version of the 4xE that you get, and 4-wheel drive is standard. It also uses Dana 44 axles, just as you'd expect in an off-road vehicle. In case you're wondering, this is where the cabin heater is located. It is a resistive element heater, so no heat pump going on in the 4xE. Moving rearwards, we find all of the drive control electronics in this area here. This is the DC to DC converter, the charger, the heater for the battery. All of that is contained in this unit that's protected by an additional skid plate underneath the vehicle. So Jeep says that this has the same kind of water fording ability and off-road ability that you'd find in a regular Wrangler. And that was one of the essential things that Jeep engineers focused on when designing this vehicle. It had to be a Jeep first. Back here we have a 17.3 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. This is actively heated and actively cooled, so you don't have to worry about the temperature outside. The battery will be just fine. Charging happens behind door number one. There's a 7.2 kilowatt onboard charger. It's in that drive electronics area that I showed you earlier, just above that skid plate. This will take the battery from completely empty to completely full in about two and a half hours if you have access to a level two charger. Obviously, it's going to take longer if you have access to a level one charger, but most folks should be just fine with the 110 volt power cord if they're just charging this overnight at home. So there you have it. That's how Jeep has electrified the Wrangler. If you want to know how this drives, be sure and stay tuned because I will have a video on that just as soon as I can tell you about that. There is an embargo, so be sure and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. This kind of plug-in hybrid drivetrain is one that we're seeing an awful lot in the industry right now, where we combine a traditional automatic transmission with an electric motor inside the transmission housing and then an auxiliary motor connected to the engine unit. It results in a very smooth, very predictable driving experience. So if you're interested in a plug-in hybrid that feels and drives just like any other version of this vehicle, then the Wrangler plug-in hybrid is going to be exactly the right vehicle for you. Now, fuel economy does appear to be a little bit lower than the regular Wrangler, but that will depend on exactly how you you drive the vehicle. So I suspect if you live in a mountainous area, the additional regenerative ability, the ability to put power back into the battery pack might make this a little bit more efficient on your daily commute. But it's not all about efficiency. Remember that this vehicle is not going to use a lot of gasoline on the average daily commute. According to CBS, the average American commutes 16 miles each way every day, so only nine miles would be on gasoline. That means that even the slightly smaller gas tank that we find in this Wrangler 4xE versus the regular model will give you about a thousand miles on that one tank of gas. And that's, of course, if you were only able to charge at home. If you were able to charge at the office, you could commute both ways and use absolutely nothing.